Floating in the vastness of space, our Earth looks so peaceful from a distance. But beneath its surface, powerful forces are at work. Massive plates shifting, colliding, and reshaping the very land beneath our feet. Each movement is a vital part of the dynamic story of our planet. And today, we'll dive into one of Earth's most captivating processes, plate tectonics. Deep inside our planet, the Earth is made of several layers. At the very top, we have the crust, the part where we live, where all the continents and oceans are. But did you know the crust isn't just one single piece? It's actually broken into huge sections called tectonic plates, like pieces of a cracked eggshell. These plates float on top of the mantle, a layer of thick, hot, partially molten rock. You'll know this as magma. The mantle is divided into two parts, upper and lower mantle. The uppermost part of the mantle, which sits beneath the crust, is rigid and together both these layers form the lithosphere. It is this layer that forms the Earth's tectonic plates. The lithosphere sits on top of a softer, sticky layer called the asthenosphere. It's this layer that allows the tectonic plates to move in all directions. The Earth's crust comes in two types, oceanic and continental. Oceanic crust is thinner and denser because it's mainly made of basalts. Imagine it as a compact, heavy type of rock. Continental crust, on the other hand, is thicker and less dense, mostly made of granite, a lighter rock that helps keep the continents afloat. These plates are always moving, but very, very slowly, only a few centimeters each year, about as fast as your fingernails grow. So what happens when these plates move? Well, the answer lies at plate boundaries, the edges where two plates meet. There are three types of boundaries, and each type brings its own surprises. First, we have convergent boundaries. When two plates crash into each other, big things happen. If an oceanic plate meets a continental plate, the oceanic plate is forced beneath the continental one in a process called subduction. This usually leads to volcanic activity and the creation of mountain belts, like the Andes in South America. Should two oceanic plates meet, they often create deep sea trenches, like the infamous Mariana Trench, the deepest point in our oceans. When two continental plates meet, they create massive mountain ranges. Think of the Himalayas, which keep getting taller as the Indian plate pushes into the Eurasian plate. But what about when plates are moving apart? Well, these are called divergent boundaries and mainly happen along mid-ocean ridges, like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Here, new crust is formed as magma rises from below the surface. It's why the Atlantic Ocean is slowly getting wider. On land, divergent boundaries create rift valleys, like the East African Rift, where the land is literally being pulled apart, forming new valleys and lakes. And finally, we have transform boundaries. At these boundaries, plates slide past each other. This horizontal movement can cause stress to build up, which is eventually released as an earthquake. The San Andreas Fault in California is a perfect example of a transform boundary. It's the reason why California has so many earthquakes. So what causes these plates to move? Well, the movement of tectonic plates is caused by forces deep inside the Earth. One of the main drivers is convection currents in the mantle. Imagine a pot of boiling water. As the water heats up at the bottom, it rises, then cools down and sinks, creating a circular motion. The mantle, even though it's solid rock, moves very slowly over a long period of time because it's so hot and under pressure. The heat from the Earth's core causes these convection currents, which slowly pushes and pulls the plates above. Another important force is gravity. When new crust forms at places like mid-ocean ridges, it is hot and less dense. As it moves away from the ridge towards convergent boundaries, it cools down, gets heavier and starts to sink. Gravity helps move the plates as the cooler, denser crust sinks. But how do we know all of this is really happening? Well, one of the first clues came from the way continents seem to fit together, almost like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Take a look at South America and Africa. They look like they could slot right together. This idea was first proposed by Alfred Wegener. I shall call this process continental drift. Then there's fossil evidence. Scientists have found identical fossils of ancient plants and animals on continents now separated by vast oceans. For example, fossils of the reptile Mesosaurus have been found in both South America and Africa, suggesting that these continents were once connected. So with all of this movement and collision of plates, you might wonder why the Earth doesn't shrink or expand. Well, it's all about balance. 
At divergent boundaries like mid-ocean ridges, new crust is constantly being formed, pushing the plates apart. Meanwhile, at convergent boundaries, old crust is destroyed when one plate is forced beneath the other. This cycle of creation and destruction keeps the size of the Earth relatively stable. Plate tectonics isn't just a dry scientific theory. It's what makes our planet so dynamic. Plate movements cause earthquakes, create towering mountain ranges and form fiery volcanoes. These processes have shaped our continents over millions of years. Without plate tectonics, we wouldn't have the diverse landscapes we see today. The Earth is alive, always shifting, always changing, and that's the magic of plate tectonics. If you enjoyed learning about our ever-moving planet, make sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of our Earth-shaking adventures next.